Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. And uh, on this show, this is our supplemental show. It's episode number 169. We're going to be talking about uh, a couple of new uh, one new knife drop uh, and uh, some news in the knife world, but a bunch of knives that have come across my desk, yes, during No New Knife November. That's kind of a joke at this point, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, But before we get rolling, I want to do something that I've been been neglecting to do on this show recently, uh, which is a pocket check, because uh, I I just kind of want to let you all know what I'm carrying, but also it's a great excuse to ask you to just pick up the phone and give us a call. Like they used to say on the, on the TV commercials, pick up, a, uh, pick up a phone, give us a call. 724-466-4487 is the Knife Junkie listener line. Call us, tell us what you're carrying, make it quick, and we'll put it on the air. And we'll do a little uh, montage. Uh, Jim's like, uh, we will? I'm the one who's going to be doing that. Is that what we're doing now? Yeah, we'll do a montage. Today I was carrying the... Uh, Carrying the new Hogue and uh, and my old case knife, you know, something like that. Boom. Uh, this is this is Jim from Tallahassee. Today I was carrying my salt knife and a uh, and a fruit fruit cutter, something like that. Uh, so I will start. I'll start this, and then you will continue by calling the listener line 724-466-4487. You'll hear yourself on the show. Today I am carrying this beefy and glorious. Black Stallion from Off Grid Knives. Uh, we just recently did an interview with Kerry from Off Grid Knives. He's, he designs these knives. He is at the helm of this company, uh, having them produced by Best Tech, like this knife, or We, uh, We Knife Company. You may have heard of them. They're a little outfit from China. And uh, I have uh, one of their elites here, the Scorpion Elite. That's an Off Grid Knife made by We. Awesome knives. Uh, what I love about this Black Stallion is this giant uh, sheep cliff blade. I love it because it's got a, a stout enough tip to go through the toughest of like sort of clamshell packaging, uh, but it's long, uh, sharp, and broad. Uh, it's only a saber grind, only a saber grind, but uh, it's so thin and broad that a saber grind makes it super, super thin behind the edge. So I really dig this knife and I love the milling, This all of this pocketing on the G10 is so pleasingly grippy. Uh, so I really like this. Uh, it's also on bearings, which, um, well, is very pleasing. Uh, not not a deal breaker or a prerequisite for me, but it's a, a flipper on bearings. It's very smooth. And if that's uh, your kind of thing, this might be your kind of thing. Uh, and then secondary today, I will be, uh, today is an off day for me. So I'll be able to do some things that I, I I like to do for myself. I'm going to be working on uh, finishing up this knife. Uh, I've shown this blade off a million times over the last year and a half. Hey, check out this knife. I'm very proud of it, uh, uh, but I've been working very, very slowly on it. I finally had it heat treated by none other other than Alex Steingraber. So it's got a sweet custom heat treat. Uh, A lot of attention was spent on the heat treat of this AEBL uh, Bowie blade. And uh, yesterday I got the handle on there. This is a black micarta with a purple liner there. And today I'm going to finish that off. So uh, the other knife in my pocket is, incidentally, the very first pocket knife I ever got. And it's one that my grandpa gave me. And this is a Camillus camp knife. So it's got uh, it's got the blade, uh, you know, the regular uh, sort of drop point blade. Well, it's a drop point now because my grandfather used it a lot and sharpened it pretty much flat, but it started as a uh, spear point. And then a, it's got a really excellent, these are very hard tools to pull out, but it's got an excellent screwdriver and cap lifter. And then the tool, since I was a child that got the most use on this is the outstanding all. And so this all is what I'm using and carrying this for today because I've been using it to, uh, I used it yesterday a lot, that tip, that sharp tip to score score the micarta as I was um, 
usually when I put a handle on, I'll make a big block and then and then slowly shave it away. This time I wanted to make the handle as closely contoured uh, to the tang as possible so I wouldn't have to do too much micarta removal uh, at the end because it can get very tricky in the corners and, and all that. So anyway, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress. And uh, so because of that, I'm carrying my grandpa's knife and not for nothing, but my grandfather was... Uh, a, uh, a truly a renaissance man and and he built a knife for my brother and he built a, a fake sword for me and all that and and so maybe using this to make this maybe it has a symbolic meaning to it too or maybe i'm just a sentimental italian person so that's what i'm carrying today i got the the black stallion and this old camillus camp knife so call the listener line 724-466-4487 and let us know what you're carrying. And uh, yeah, I want to do this. I want to put together a little montage. Uh, maybe I can do it, Jim, if that's uh, if, if I'm just heaping this on you suddenly. Jim's like, I'd love to do that. Uh, and it'll sound, it'll sound great. And I want to just hear your voices. I know you're out there. I'd love to hear your voice. You get to hear mine all the time. Get to. You, you choose to listen to this, this silky smooth voice. Uh, so I want to hear yours. So there it is. Here's the swig. true okay so uh no new knives november i have to give you a little update as i as i told you i lasted 13 days and then i ordered the gec little rattler or little rattler uh that i saw uh was still on uh, blade hq in that beautiful maroon micarta handle i was like you know what <sighs> devil may care i bought it and i thought oh since i bought it I'll wait till December to open it. That'll be kind of my consolation punishment, my my penance, if you will, uh, for making this purchase. But I know how quickly these things get snapped up, these things being GECs, uh, fresh, fresh off the presses. So I did it. And then knowing that I wasn't going to open it till December, I was really slack about paying attention to when it got here. And... Uh, 12 days after it arrived at its destination, which was my office... I realized I should check on this knife. Where is it? It's Blade HQ. You know, they, it's not like they, um, they, uh, they don't injure themselves getting the, getting stuff in the mail, which is cool. I love Blade HQ. It's not a diss. But I was like, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not in a rush. They're not in a rush. It's all good. Uh, but but I really was not in a rush and, and forgot about it and then did a whole bunch of sleuthing. Uh, you know, like a detective, I was like, oh my God, where's my knife? And I, I checked the tracking and oh my God, it was delivered 12 days ago. Where is it? Whose pocket? Whose hands? Who is caressing my little rattler right now? Uh, so I did what any what any uh, person would do. I got in the car, I went to the post office and tried to get to the bottom of it. And actually, Despite what a lot of people say about the post office, I think they're awesome. At least the post offices in Northern Virginia are awesome. And uh, uh, at least the two I frequent. And I go in and uh, talk to the guy, the manager. He's, uh, he's a Sikh gentleman, which actually makes me feel great because the Sikhs are definitely a bladed culture. And not that I was going to tell him what was in the box, but I figured maybe this is providence. Maybe this is just a uh, a good thing that a Sikh is helping me find my lost knife. And uh, he was very cool. And and he let me know that someone from the mailroom at my office picked it up. So lo and behold, I rush back to the office and I go to the mailroom there. And I do that a lot because things will show up there. Maybe things I don't necessarily want lingering on the doorstep. And uh I'll go, I'll go there. I, I know it's been, I know it's arrived. I've been tracking it. It's here. And they're like, oh yeah, uh, oh, oh, there it is. And I'll pick it up, you know, got to be vigilant. So I go in there and phew, it's not there. I look in all the usual places. It's like, I know where my packages are hiding in our mailroom better than they do. Uh, so I, I kind of guide the, the mailroom guy around. They're all great guys, uh, but I guide him to all the spots and it's not there. And then, you know what I remember? If you're listening, if you're listening, sir, prove me wrong. You know where I work. Prove me wrong. But I remember meeting a guy in the mailroom who's got a thing for knives. I know it's terrible, but this is where this hobby brings me. Now I'm a suspicious person because I'm like, that That mailroom guy, that mailroom guy likes knives. Uh, uh, I was introduced to him. Oh, 
he's got a knife podcast. And oh, Bob, this guy likes knives. And I'm like, hmm. And my package goes missing. And it's from BHQ uh, with a you know, Utah return address. And, and anyone worth their salt knows what BHQ means. And so now that's what I'm thinking. I'm being very suspicious. And this is what No New Knife November has driven me to. It's, it's, it's turned me into this. So uh, two lessons out of this. A, I should have just stuck to my guns and said, little rattler will come around again. I'll be able to buy it on the secondary market for twice the price, but still it'll be there. If it's that important, you'll get it then. Stick to your guns and, and, and just no new knife November it out till the end. That's one lesson. The other lesson is, uh, well, it's not quite a lesson. It's just a, a view into my own heart. It's, it's like, wow. It's it's really unearthed some some suspicion, some suspiciousness in me, and some, I don't know, some some unwanted venom. So I'm I'm curious, like uh, may, maybe I should just not do a no new knife month. Maybe it's turned me into a monster. Just kidding. I, I think maybe I should have just stuck to my guns. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how this all turns out. But when I uh, when I head back to work this coming week. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I, I am going to get to the bottom of this. I am not going to accuse anyone. That's all just kind of fantasy. I doubt that's what the real thing is, uh, that someone nabbed my knife out of the mail. But anyway, so No New Knife November is almost put to bed, but I, I had to give you that update and I had to be truthful. Uh, this is so, sort of like a video confession. So there you have it. Uh, on those lines, uh, Alex, our good friend Alex from Alex's Knife Box, had up a video and and he and Dirk Werning, a uh, good friend of his, good friend of this show and uh, awesome guy, great knife maker and reviewer on YouTube, check him out, uh, were having a discussion about um, knife videos, uh, about how many great reviewers there are and how many great knives there are and how much coverage there is uh, on YouTube of the knife industry and new drops and such. And, and a question arose between the two of them. I believe it was over dinner. I don't mean to um, uh, make this up, but I think they were out to dinner after the California Custom Knife Show and uh, had a conversation about, should we be watching more of these videos? And my first thought is, how? How do you do it? I can't even watch all the videos I want to watch. Uh, they came to the conclusion that yes, actually you should. And, uh, uh, their reasoning, I thought, was was really good. Their reasoning is that you get the broad. It's sort of like the genetic thing. You know, you don't want inbreeding. You don't want a dog that is all from the same perfectly bred family of purebred animals because it'll turn into a monster. Uh, you want the broadest selection of genes to get the healthiest mutt. Well, maybe the idea is you want the broadest amount of takes, amount of opinions, amount of perspectives on the same knife or same category or group of knives to get the best idea of where your money should be spent or where your time as a knife hobbyist is best spent because we have lives. We have lots of other things going on besides knives and knife videos so, uh, or knife collecting. So the more information you collect, uh, the more time and money you're likely to save. Plus, you end up meeting people. Uh, Alex and Dirk are now fast friends, and they also live in the same state. So incidentally, they can see each other, which is great. So I don't know. Interesting video. Check it out. Uh, Alex's Knife Box. Uh, uh, should, be, should we be watching more YouTube knife videos? And, and uh, the answer surprised me, but makes absolute and total sense. So um, yeah, just reflecting on that. Uh, as we move out of this opening banter section. I do must say, I have something to say, which is a sponsor ad. Get the Upside app. Get Upside app is your way to get cash on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. That's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas to get an app and start saving to get the upside app and start saving again that's the knife junkie.com slash save on gas and borrowing from dave rubin back to me you're listening to the knife junkie podcast and now here's the knife junkie with the knife life news 
So uh, this past week, uh, it was actually November 23rd, uh, we got sad news in the knife community and in the world that Tony Bowes passed away. Uh, Tony Bowes is known uh, as one of the recent sort of saviors of uh, traditional style knives, saviors. That's such a dramatic term. But what I mean is he was a custom knife maker that, uh, that really shed a, a, a bright spotlight on uh, more traditional knives, slip joint knives, just pocket knives is what they were called back when he started. Uh, there's a great article uh, in Knife Magazine by Mark Zaleski. He was on uh, our episode number 70, excuse me, parched. He was on episode number 70. He's an extremely knowledgeable uh, guy about all things knives. And he's the editor of Knife Magazine. And he, he wrote a, a nice uh, little piece about Tony Bowes in Knife Magazine. I really think you should check it out. Uh, but he started in the, in the uh, he, he made his first knife the year after I was born. So 1972, he started uh, making knives and uh, in Indiana. And he just opened up the world of, uh, well, let me read this to you, actually. Legendary slip joint maker Tony Bowes died today of an apparent heart attack. He was 74 years of age. Bowes was more than just an incredibly skilled and detail-oriented maker. He was one of the good guys who made it, and his impact on the knife community was a significant one. Bowes made his first knives in 1972, and with Wilfred, Indiana squarely in pocket knife collecting country, he was soon fielding requests to repair pocket knives for the traders in his area. Tony quickly developed an appreciation for old-time pocket knives and the skilled cutlers who made them and made his first pocket knife in 1975. No one called them slip joints then. He grew to know and understand the old knives inside and out and in time built, an, built up a sizable collection of really fine old pocket knives by American and English makers. Tony's reputation grew along with his skills and by mid-1990s, he was making traditional folders that many feel were as good or better than the best folding knives ever made. He became the first slip joint maker to collaborate with, a, with a, a knife manufacturer in 1999 when he formed a relationship with W.R. Case & Sons that would endure for the rest of his life. This relationship proved to be a great success for both parties, with Tony lending his expertise to showcase what collectors wanted in their knives and teaching them how to make custom-grade knives in their Bradford PA factory, and Tony's easygoing aw shucks personality resonating as Case's brand ambassador, making his star rise even faster. Tony Bowes was probably the most selfless knife maker I've ever seen. This is, of course, written uh, by Mark Zaleski, uh, sharing his extensive knowledge and even the patterns he'd worked hard to develop with knife makers far and wide. Many a knife maker was invited to the Wilford workshop to learn the tricks of the trade under his guidance. For all of his for all of this giving and more, Bose was honored with the Knife Makers Guild Red Watson Memorial Friendship Award, an honor that is treasured by all who have received it. Wilford Works and the Bose family legacy will be carried on by Tony's son, Reese, who has learned his trade well at his master's hand. But Tony Bose was one of a kind uh, in the knife community and is surely uh, a better place for having been a part of it. Sorry, I just jacked up that last part. But beautifully written by Mark Zaleski and uh, what an amazing career Tony Bowes had. Of course, uh, uh, of, the, of his uh, many patterns that he created, I think the most famous is the Lanny's Clip. And many, many people have made their beautiful versions of the Lanny's Clip since then. So I just wanted to say, uh, uh, just give a little tribute to Tony Bowes and read Mark Zaleski's uh, article. Thank you, sir, uh, for that coverage. So there you have it. Thank you, Tony Bowes. Uh, next, I want to talk about something a little lighter, which is Essie, SE Knives. Here is my, actually, this is, this is not an Essie knife. This is just pre-Essie, but uh, this is the spirit of the Essie knife. This is the, uh, this is the Artac 2, and then uh, Essie kind of uh, bought Randall's Adventure Training, and uh, and turned it into Essie. But anyway, uh, Essie is uh, now making their, their very, very most popular Essie 4, which is a four inch bladed uh, knife that basically looks like this in four inch version uh, and is a, an excellent all arounder 
Uh, it is a great field knife, great camp knife, and a lot of people flex this into a great EDC knife. And for that reason, uh, they are releasing this in S35VN. S35VN and an outdoor knife, you say? Well, I think it's perfect, actually, because with this size blade, um, well, you're going to be using this for more uh, less high impact chores, right? Uh, you want you want a high carbon steel for its forgiving toughness in a larger outdoor knife. That's what this is, 1095. You pound on it, it's for, it's tough, meaning it it's forgiving. It it will bend before it breaks. Uh, whereas stainless steel is much more breaky before bendy. Uh, but here you have a four inch uh, size blade. And you have a stainless steel that is quite tough. S35VN was developed from the, um, many people think, superior S30V uh, to be a little softer, to be a little less prone to breakage or chippage uh, on impact. So it kind of makes sense to have a sort of tough stainless steel like S35VN in a pared down outdoors knife uh, that, that is used more for uh, lower impact chores. So. I gotta say, I, I have a, I have an orbiting interest in these SE knives. They're so, they're the kind of knives that don't get my heart racing. They're um, just by looking at them, but just the fact that they are so uh, vaunted and loved and uh, and 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 raised up by by people who really know their outdoor stuff. Uh, makes makes them compelling to me. So uh, I'll put it that way. Uh, I do like the SE6. I like that you can double edge it. Uh, some places there's, I can't remember what the outfit is, but there's an online store uh, that has your, your, your own little SE6 lab and you can turn it into whatever you want. And on that, you can give it a, a, a kind of a bayonet double edge, which is kind of a half double edge, which who doesn't need that? Especially on their outdoor knife that they might be batoning with. Uh, that's batoning sarcasm. What do you think of that? Well, you, you only really see that here on the Knife Junkie. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, the only other thing that you'll see, uh, the only other place you'll see the Knife Junkie is on YouTube. Oh, terrible, awkward transition. But what I'm trying to say is go to YouTube. Well, I guess you're already here. Hit the subscribe button and the bell. The bell lets you know whenever any of this uh, sort of genius pops up on the channel, you'll be able to just click on it. It'll take you right there and get to talking about knives. So uh, on YouTube, please subscribe, like, share, share the videos. Actually, that's one of the one of the greatest things you can do is uh, send it to someone you think might be interested in it. Um, you know, maybe not even a knife person. Perhaps I'm talking about this knife and you know you have a camping buddy. You're like, oh, I think maybe he would like the SE4, perhaps in S35VN because it's a semi-tough stainless steel let me send him a link to this uh, video. So do that kind of thing. That would be, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, so that's YouTube. Check it out. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop online at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Thenifejunkie.com slash knives. So um, I got a new knife, uh, no new knife November, but it was it was a gift. And it was a, an amazing gift. And I'm, I'm very, very, very grateful. And it's very apropos to stuff happening here on the channel. And uh, that is uh, last week I showed you how a good friend of the channel loaned us the uh, American Blade Works Model 1s, right? And how uh, uh, version uh, 4 differed from version 3. I'm going to be making a video on this, uh, but the action on the action and the geometry around the flipper tab are a little different and to great effect. The flipping action on the version 4 was amazing and outstanding. And uh, I wrote to Michael uh, Martin of American Blade Works to let him know that I finally had the knives we were talking about on the podcast in hand and how impressed I was, especially considering he's a one-man band and he keeps doing tweak after tweak. And, and he has, he you know, he, he makes changes very quickly. He can turn the ship much quicker than a bigger uh, outfit. And he said, oh, well, I got a Model 5. Want to check it out? 
what do you think I said? So he sent it to me and it's, uh, man, it's very impressive. And, and I, I have yet to figure out, uh, well, no, no, no. I, I haven't done a serious sit down with it, uh, but he has refined the flipping action even more. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to look into the changes a at a certain point. It's like, it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the gym. You won, dude, you're big. You, you got it. <laughs> it's like, uh, that's, uh, that's Kevin Hart talking about giant guys at the gym. You won. I, okay, go home. It's the same thing with this. The version four is like, you know, it's kind of a perfect knife. What else are you going to do to it? And this one that he sent me is, is, uh, is amazing. And I look forward to exploring um, you know, all the differences between four and five. Funny thing is, is that uh, in the note, he says, let me know what kind of changes I should make. And I'm, I'm thinking that's, that's great. I will, I will. Let me carry it for, for a titch. Let me carry it a while and see what jumps out at me. But that's what people want in their knife companies, whether it's the one man, Michael Martin at American Blade Works, or it's Benchmade. They want to hear that. You know, Benchmade might take a year to, to implement those changes, whereas Michael Martin can, you know, can be light on his toes and, uh, and, and change things up in his own shop. But even if it does take a year, Benchmade or wh whomever, people want to hear that. They want to hear, what, what can we do? What can we do better? How can we make this? It's like the suggestion box at Denny's, you know, uh, uh, bring the bacon hotter or make it crispier. You know, you just write the little thing, drop it in the, well, that's, that's what, company should have a suggestion box. And that's what he said, you know, I don't know, just to me, it's amazing. This beautifully little engineered piece of kit shows up and he's like, how can I do it better? I love that. I love that spirit. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward to to checking this thing out. And and since it's mine, thank you, Michael, since it's mine, I'm going to actually put it to, to, uh, to hard work because I, I borrowed knives. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so anyway, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to mention that, uh, listener line again, 724-466-4487. What new knives have you gotten? I'm pushing it today. I want to do this montage now, or is it? Yeah, it is a montage. I want to do this, this mashup of, uh, of voices. This is my new one. I'm very excited. What's your new knife? Tell us what it is. Let us know. You'll go on the air, man. You'll be a star, baby. My people will call your people. It'll be fantastic. Okay, so I got a couple of another new knives in hand today, uh, or this week, uh, from the Pass Around group. But before I get to them, uh, Jim, this wasn't in my notes, so sorry, but uh, there won't be a graphic for this. But I, I happened to pop open an... Okay, so look, let me back up a second and say uh, there were different periods in my life, and maybe I'm headed back into one currently, where I thought the world was about to reach serious upheaval. And uh, I thought, well... The, the justification I've always given my wife about this sprawling knife collection. And the, the one that really resonated with her was when the bottom falls out of society, baby, we have all of these vital, vital instruments that we can trade for food. Look at all these knives we have. Who doesn't need a knife? You know, especially, uh, especially post apocalypse or post bottom falling out. Uh, so, so baby, we'll, we'll, the more knives I acquire, the more future bank we have after the apocalypse. So can I get this new cold steel? Yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, how it worked for a long time. And, and, uh, and then I was like, damn it, I don't want to trade my cold steels away just because the apocalypse has happened. I don't want to get rid of my Sabenza to get food. I have an idea. I go to Walmart. These Ozark trail knives. Uh, I've mentioned them before. Uh, the four, the five dollar uh, knives that are just actually really impressively built, quite sturdy. You know, not not using the best materials, but sturdy, usable, sharpenable uh, knives for four, five bucks. I'm like, I don't carry that kind of cash on me. I go into Walmart and I see these Ozark Trail knives hanging. You know, hanging two bucks untouched, two dollar oh, ninety nine. Now that that kind of money I carry on me. So I bought one. And then I came back uh, the next time and I bought like four. And then that happened every time I went to Walmart. And and I, I, I accrued a bundle of these. And I'm like, this is what I'll trade first. That way, maybe the apocalypse blows over. And all I've done is really traded away all these cheap $2 knives 
uh, and I've gotten to save my knife collection. So I'm going through, I keep these where I keep the boxes to the knives I have and, and I was needed to retrieve a box. And I, I, I was like, Oh God, man, I got like 50 of these things. Or no, I don't have 50, but I have a bunch of them. I, I should just see what they're like pieces of junk. I say, so I, I take one of these out, I open it up and you know, it's not winning any beauty contests. I will, I will grant you that, but for two bucks, no blade play in either direction, and it's a back lock. It does, doesn't have any lock rock. No side to side play. It's sharp. It's mostly serrated. This is act, you know, and, and and so with a with a crappy steel and a crappy you know knife, you want mostly serrated because that edge will last the longest. Because most people aren't doting over a two dollar knife. I gotta say, man, Ozark Trail, you did it again. I like that. I like that Ozark Trail Christmas knife. If you do, I would I would go up from here. But th consider this knife. It, it, maybe as a shop knife, if you, I, I don't know. You can you can tighten the pivot if it does loosen up. You can tighten the pivot. If if you're a person with a shop and you do a lot of, uh, you know, crap work, get one of these two dollar Ozark Trail knives at Walmart. Bang it around. See see how it does and let us know. Uh, I'm gonna put this one through its paces around here. But I'm not you know I'm not a hard user so. Uh, I'd be interested. Now, uh, this is where you, it's going to break. If you do any prying at all, this cheesy plastic handle is going to break for sure. Uh, I, I'm not saying it's a, a masterwork, but I'm saying $2. Two, what else do you buy for two? Altoids. You buy Altoids for $2. Um, you know, some soda you can get for two bucks. Uh, and, and those things are gone in the blink of an eye. This at least... We know uh, that, uh, you know, this plastic has a shelf life of several million years and, and maybe the whole assemblage will stay together if you take care of it. Just an interesting thing. Uh, so Ozark Trail, you done it again. OK, uh, so uh, about the other knives that came across uh, my desk, uh, the pass around a new pass around group actually led by Therapeutic Edge. It's awesome. It's called the. Um, oh, my God. Well, uh, let me tell you about the the knives I've gotten, uh, and and I will tell you in a in a hot second um, the exact. It's called the Knife Exchange, and it's a pass around group that Therapeutic Edge started. And uh, I've gotten two cool knives. Well, I got three knives, but one I already had, so so it's I'm not going to mention that one here. But uh, I got two new knives, and they're knives that I'm just like sure I'll check them out, and I didn't even look to see what they are. And they showed up and they are pretty interesting. And, and, and I'm glad that I just said, sure, send it. Because if I had looked into it, I'd be like, nah, I don't need to see that. Uh, but I'm glad I did. I, I'm glad I did. Okay, so the, the first one uh, we'll talk about is the Sig Hogue. It's a, it's a new um, uh, Sig Sour branded knife made by Hogue. Uh, it's the K320. And they make this in an automatic version. And this is the manual version. And uh, it uses their Abel lock. That's uh, that's um, uh, uh, I had it. The Abel lock stands for um, uh, bar lock, uh, ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. <laughs> Thank you. The Abel lock, ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. So basically, they're saying, uh, well, it's a it's a uh, it's a bench made lock, but better. So uh, uh, the uh, Hogue has done a, a killer job with the Able lock, uh, with the Axis style lock. Uh, they really did enhance it. It's I like it better. I gotta say, but anyway, we're not talking about that here. We're talking about this K320. And uh, my first thought when I saw this was like, uh oh, it's like a Manix. This is a this is a, a great platform. It really does look kind of like a Manix. And I'm not saying that the lines uh, mimic it, but the, the function, this area here, and obviously this 50-50 choil, it's very Mannix-y. And uh, uh, that, you know, already puts it on good footing as a, as a good knife. Now, um, things I like about this knife, the Able Lock, definitely. I love that 50-50 choil. I, I got to say, on a knife that isn't... Uh, 
Uh, on a knife that's an EDC utility style like this, that's not like a fighting knife or something, I love that 50-50 choil. It, uh, it, 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 it's highly functional. I got to say, uh, being shallow, I like the way it looks. Uh, uh, it's got great ergonomics in the hand here. I mean, it feels great here in this saber grip. And then when you choke up, that, uh, that feels great. Uh, very cool feature here. It has these sort of gription uh, uh, sconces. They look like sconce lights here. Uh, so I'm going to call them gription sconces. Rolls right off the tongue right here. So when you grab it, when you grab the knife out of your pocket, you get some, you get some grip there. Let's see. Let orient that correctly. See that? They're like little peaks and they grab your thumb and you can, uh, your finger, you can pull it out. Very useful uh, blade shape with a high saber grind on, on thin stock. I, I, I didn't measure the stock. You can go to someone else's channel for that. <laughs> Thank you. I think I will click. Uh, and then, uh, so it's about half an inch thick. Uh, FRN handles. Now this is my, uh, yeah, okay. Made in the USA. Awesome by Hogue. They're an amazing company. They make everything in house, like pretty much everything, even their screws feels great in reverse grip, great in reverse grip, which is a plus, especially for something like this, which might be on a cop's belt, a police officer's belt or military belt. You might need to, you know, punch into something. And well, how about this? A 55 gallon drum, uh, that's supposed to have oil in it, but actually it's packed with Uzis like in dogs of war. <laughs> So uh, it's great in reverse grip, made in the USA. Now I'm going to tell you about two things that are missteps here. The FRN handle is really comfortable, very grippy. It's uh, it's very ergonomic, feels great. But FRN, and this is great FRN. I like the FRN that Hogue uses, actually. But it's very light. It's almost too light for um, the amount of weight in the blade and at the pivot. Excuse me. I feel like I want a little bit, maybe maybe it needs just a heavier backspacer. I feel like I want a little bit more weight in the back. It's a little blade heavy, but some really excellent blade heavy knives like the, uh, the Microtech Socom Elite is a blade heavy knife, but still it feels great in hand. This feels great in hand. I kind of, kind of wish it was made out of G10 though. And I'm not being a material snob. Uh, Hogue does FRN just right. I'm, I'm thinking more for the weight. Uh, and then the other issue is an issue that the next knife also has. This, this to a lesser extent, but okay. So everyone has to avoid the circle, right? The circle opening hole. If you have a circle opening hole, you have to pay the glessers. And so that's fine. That's, that's, they were brilliant in patenting the circle. It's like, a, it's like Hudsucker proxy, you know, for kids. Uh, but so you can't use that there. You have to use a different shape. And a lot of different companies use a lot of different shapes. I love the lozenge shape, just the extended oval circle shape, you know, like, uh, like on a, um, like on a strider, like on a strider or some other hoog knives. But here they have this, um, we'll call that an apostrophe. They have a sort of a, an apostrophe shape. And that's all fine and good, but I feel like the wide end should be on the other side because when it's closed, oh, it is on the other. It, I, I apologize. Just something about this opening hole uh, is 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 hitting me wrong. It's it's on the slow roll. Okay, so I have two different issues with two different opening holes. We'll get to this one next, uh, but on this one, it's the slow roll. So on the flick, it's great because you got the wide end towards the pivot and you can flick it and it's spidey flicks well. But on the slow roll, you got the you got the smaller end there. And slow roll is probably what more people are more likely to do. Uh, a, it's less threatening and B, most people, especially most people who are gonna be buying this knife and, and using it, are not necessarily gonna be knife people. They're gonna be police officers and military people and they're gonna have to open their knives and they're not, maybe not up on the spidey flick or on the flick flick. You know, maybe it's just like they got to open up their knife. Uh, so the slow roll might be more uh, uh, appropriate in more situations, uh, say for a firefighter, or an EMT or something. He's not going to want to flick this out and scare the crap out of people. So uh, with that narrowing here towards the logo, 
uh, I find it a little awkward. Now, that is just me trying to find something to put on the bad side. I had a good side and a bad side. The good side was like a Mannix, 50-50 choil, able lock, ergos, cool clip thing, usefully thin blade with great, uh, great edge geometry, reverse grip made in the USA. The other side, too light on the handle, and maybe you could change the opening hole. So really, I was reaching. This K320 is a is is quite a knife, but I look forward to having it for the next week and carrying it uh, and checking it out, and then I'll give you my uh, my take. I I, I want to try it with gloves, you know. That that's where I think this weird hole might be an issue is uh, th uh, um, gloved hands on a slow roll, or even on trying to trying to get your thumb your your gloved hands in that occlusion to reach that. But we'll see. And man, Hogue. Thank you. Thank you for making knives, Hogue, and not just cool gun grips. Next, hmm. sheep in wolves' clothing. That was totally corny, and that's not even what I meant. SRM knives. Who is SRM? Never heard of them. Oh, that's an interesting looking knife. Check out that. That's a beautiful shape. Love that long clip point. That's a, that's a pretty nice ergonomic handle, and Let's turn it on its side. Yeah, it's G10 and skeletonized. Great jimping. Weird opening hole. I don't mean to prevaricate, but weird opening hole. But good for the slow roll. And on this one, bad for the flick. What the hell is SRM knives? Hmm. Is it? It says, stay ready for more. Stay ready for more knives? Never heard of them. It's San Renmu. I know. I'm the last to know, like everyone else. I mean, not like everyone. Like everything else, I'm the last to know. SRM Knives is San Renmu. And we all know San Renmu from their spotty history of copying knives. Uh, or or I don't know if they ever counterfeited knives. Like, like put other people's logos on. I don't think they ever did that. But they've done a lot of deriving and borrowing um, to make their designs, but this new incarnation, SRM, Stay Ready for More, or San Renmu, uh, is making their own uh, unique designs, I have to say. If you go to the website, you'll see that their designs uh, don't look so much like Lion Steel's, don't look so much like Benchmade's, they look more like their own. I am not a huge fan of San Renmu knives, and, and that is not out of any... Um, that's not really for much of a reason. It's sort of like not being a fan of the Goonies or uh, or, or or the Sandlot. You know, they were just coming out at, at a time where I was not into that kind of movie. And, uh, you know, people who are a couple of years younger than than I am think it's crazy. I, I you know, took me to, to 48 years old to see the Goonies. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with San Renmu. It's just sort of like I was by the time I got hip to them, I was already onto other things. But they make a good knife, and they are also a um, an, an OEM for other knife companies. So they know their way around knife manufacturing. So this SRM is their sort of rebranding uh, to 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 hit a market that is less uh, interested in not paying Lion Steel money to get a Lion Steel, but are more interested in unique designs and the unique expression of knife companies. I think that this $35 knife is beautiful. I really do. Now this, uh, I, I'm not sure how new this thing is. Uh, I, I have to say their, their version of the Axis lock, unlike the Able lock, is not enhanced. It's unenhanced. It, it doesn't, it's very sticky. And, and maybe that's a thing with San Renmu Axis locks. Maybe that's a thing with this particular specimen, or maybe this just needs to break in. Uh, but this really is G10 for 35 bucks. You can see the layering there. Uh, even though I thought maybe it was FRN. It's got beautiful milling and an anodized uh, pivot collar. They've dressed up their logo. Look at that SRM. It's a triangle, but with uh, it's like a monogram triangle. And uh, look at this interesting. And, and, and I got to say, I mean, this is a touch. That's some extra time and money. Look at the milling the stepping right there in the uh, opening hole to make it less, uh, to give it some grip. It's sort of like lateral, it's like long jimping. Uh, and it really works well. The only problem is the hole is designed crazy. So 
this one works great for the slow roll because you have um, you have the reverse here. So on the Hogue, you have the, the wide part towards the pivot. And on the SRM, you have the wide part towards the tip of the blade. So where the Hogue was good at uh, uh, flicking because of that, uh, the wide end being towards the pivot, well, here, we don't have a very good flicker, I don't think, in this SRM. Now, uh, spidey flicking is fine. Spidey flicking is is fine. It gives you a big wide area to, to, to reach in. But for me, for, for thumb flicking, which to me is still the primary way to open a, a, a non-flipper knife, there's not enough purchase there. I mean, there is, but it's not comfortable and it's not sure. And if I had gloves on, it wouldn't be happening. But again, it, this is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like with the Hogue. I'm just, I'm, I'm just reaching. I'm just trying to find things to not like. Um, you know, and, and that's about it. Look at this backspacer. That's awesome. You got the machine pattern backspacer. It's chamfered so that it's uh, it sort of peaks in the center. That's a nice touch. Comes down here, creates the lanyard hole, and incidentally is awesome in reverse grip. That's the shape I want for reverse grip because your thumb comes up this way and hooks over that peak, and you have perfect control. This is this would be great for any sort of downward or, you know, reverse grip action. feels feels really good and sure. Uh, so those those, yeah, not not much bad to say. Uh, awesome awesome action. Though I'm not crazy about this sticky lock. The G10 milling is great. Skeletonized for lightness. By the way, that's D2 steel. I don't know what China D2 means. Uh, I know people that's a, that's been a joke, but uh, this is D2 and it's from China. Uh, it's an original design. It's not a ripoff, which is a good uh, thing. It's got that opening hole chamfer, which means they're really paying attention to detail there, which also means that I think this lock will probably break in and get super smooth. And it's got a good clip, deep carry, great jimping. It's a good looking knife. I like it. I like it. What's not to like about this big clip? clip point blade. So look for uh, review videos of both of these uh, coming up in the next uh, two weeks. The the SIG, Sig Sauer Hogue made knife, uh, K320, and the SRM, what is this thing called? The 9201. The 9201 just rolls right off the tongue. Uh, look for, uh, excuse me, look for reviews of those on YouTube in the offing. And also look for pictures of them on Instagram. You should check out my Instagram channel. Uh, uh, trying to get better at being more active, like on a daily, uh, like I used to be. But uh, uh, in any case, I put uh, I put a, I put stuff up there on Instagram. Uh, you can keep up with with me there uh, with the new shows that we're going. You know, like I'll advertise some shows. I'll put up some new knives. This kind of thing. Uh, Look at that. That's my that's my <laughs> my daughter's photography there. So anyway, uh, check it out on Instagram. Check it being me on Instagram and uh, well, look at some nice knife pictures. Uh, and coming up soon, we're going to have a couple of new deep cut episodes. I'm working on scheduling uh, some uh, one of them. You may have gotten a uh, you if you if you saw the town hall, you got a little preview, but I'm not going to say anything until it's booked. Uh, and also a couple of other people who do modding. I'm going to talk to a couple of modders. Um, uh, Tom over at Blade and Such. We're going to have a, a conversation. Uh, I have an Elvia coming back from him, an Emerson Elvia that he made some custom um, wine burgundy colored micarta scales for. Cannot wait to get that. So keep your eye out for more shows coming, uh, more deep cut shows coming. And as always, the interview shows. Uh, the Thursday Night Knives and uh, the supplemental midweek bloviation session. Uh, prevarication nation here on episode number 169 uh and before we get going uh check out the merch page the merchandise page on the knifejunkie.com there's some cool stuff up on there i'm going to be doing all of my christmas shopping on the knifejunkie.com uh you can get sweatshirts you can get mugs uh all sorts of stuff uh that say don't take dull for an answer uh, or have the knife junkie logo on them uh they're they're super cool so thank you jim for setting up that store and um uh, Look out, everyone who knows me. <laughs> you know what you're getting for Christmas. All right, everybody. Well, I want to say thank you for listening, and uh, I, I hope you're having a great November, and I hope you have a wonderful 
winter. It's starting to feel like winter here and I'm digging it. So I'm going to go out and walk the dog and go into the woods and probably carry too many knives with me, but enjoy my family and enjoy this beautiful day. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.